Good morning. So let's start with our PTE class today. This class is provided by Sika and it is free of the cost class. You don't have to pay anything at all, not a single dollar to attend the sessions here for unlimited classes. It's not like there is a limitation to class as well. You can attend unlimited number of the classes and uh, we are providing this service since May 2020 for free. And this is not up to only the PTE preparation. We extended our help to you guys for the IELTS preparation as well, for the Nati CCL preparation as well. And the languages we cover in the Nati are Hindi, Punjabi, Urdu, and Nepalese. So these all three types of the classes, test preparation classes, any queries related to that, everything, whatever we are doing into any normal, normal class by paying, you know, hundred and sometimes thousands of bucks. So that will be completely free, everything. And uh, yes, all type of needs are catered here for IELTS, for PT, for Nati CCL. There are different sorts, slots available throughout the week for the Nati CCL that you can check on the Facebook page through the uh, post updates and um, for the IELTS and PTE. The classes are from Monday to Friday for the PTE as usually we start 10 to 12 is the time in the morning Melbourne time. And uh, the uh, IELTS classes, they are two to four. Again, the Melbourne time and they, again for the Monday to Friday. Yeah, but there is one more thing like for PTE, you can also will the classes on Sunday as well. Just in case you're quite busy throughout the week, you don't have time or your timings are not matching with us. So Sunday class is also available. We can class that will be 12 to 2. And for that, you can check out the link, a uh, Zoom link, and definitely uh, uh, you can use that link for the class on a Sunday uh, as well, afternoon. And uh, beside the classes, we do offer the counseling services. That's what we are into, immigration. And uh, immigration counseling, your education counseling, Canadian immigration counseling, everything related to these queries, we are providing counseling for free and also the eligibility check for the Canada migration. We also do that for free for your profile, for your documents. And uh, if you go after the education counseling with when, uh, here in Australia, definitely yes. And if you are after some other country study like USA, like Canada, we are also dealing in that as well. And also uh, the services don't end up here. We do have the scholarships available, which can be up to 25% of your university fee, which is a huge sum of money. And um, we are having many scholarships, such scholarships with us, having different sort of the cuts from the university fee. And you can avail those services as well if you are just processing our case through us. And uh, we do offer the overseas health cover uh, insurances as well. But yes, we are offering in lowest price possible in the market. You are after any health cover or you actually do not know anything about that. Come to us. There will be like uh, all the health service provider. We are having uh, um, them with us and we are able to provide their uh, insurance plans to you. And we will be definitely providing you in the lowest price possible in the market. So these are the few services I'm mentioning here. Besides that, if you have any query, any sort of migration related query, any education related query, change of course, PR pathways, uh, which state to move on and uh, what you can do to fasten your process for the PR or if you are just into the process and nothing is happening out. So for all the queries, you can contact on the number, which is 0396631318. Or also you can send an email, which is, Need to be sent to the email ID marketing at the rate seeka.com.au. And beside that, you can leave a Facebook message as well. You can send a message here in the class as well. You can mail to my ID as well, which is pte at the rate seeka.com.au. So these are the different ways you can contact us. And most importantly, and most easy way, just step into our offices. Our offices are Melbourne, Sydney, Adelaide, Brisbane. So just step in the day you are feel you are free, you have time. And definitely we are available on the Saturdays as well. Just in case you are free in Saturdays, not the weekdays. So you can also come down uh, on those particular days as well. So yes, now let's start with the class today. And uh, we just finished off with the read aloud and repeat sentence the other day. So now we'll be continuing further. And uh, today we'll be doing the describe image. So let's just start with that.
Okay, just a second. I have to stop this for a while. Share. Okay. All right, so let's start with the describe image class today. So describe image is going to be the third item type in the exam. Uh, that means the first you will be doing the read aloud, second you will be doing the repeat sentence, and third will be the describe image. So here when it says describe image, so they will be presenting you with the few images that you have to describe in your own words. That's the task here. And this particular uh, item type, it, it boosts up your speaking score. Like uh, this solely contributes to your speaking marks only. And the mostly what is judged here is your pronunciation and most importantly, your fluency, right? Your oral fluency. So this is why it is uh, contributing to only the speaking item types, speaking uh, scores. But yes, this is the one particular item type which can boost the speaking score to 90 as well. If you are 70, 75 around doing well in here, definitely you can touch 90. So we got six to seven type of uh, item types here uh, in this uh, particular question. And uh, the types of the diagram will vary, which can be in uh, further categories like the line graph, pie chart, bar graph, Venn diagram, pictures, maps, pyramids, tables, and process diagram. So out of these type of the diagrams, any diagram can be there in those six to seven question you will be having in the describe image. So it is not uh, possible that you are having every type of the image as well. And then on the same time, it is not necessary that uh, that you are not uh, having every uh, type of the diagram, like you are getting two line graphs, two bar graphs, two pictures, and uh, that's it, right? So it could be any setup out of these uh, types of the diagrams written on the screen right now. You see, uh, they are around one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and nine types of the diagram. So let's move on. It contributes to PTE speaking score only. And what will be the uh, task here? An image is displayed on the screen in form of the diagrams above said. And you will be getting 25 seconds to prepare that image. That, that means you can study that image for 25 seconds and prepare like which points I'm going to pick up to speak. And then 40 seconds you will be having to respond. That means to answer that question. If you hesitate or do not speak fluently, you will get a low score, even if you describe the image perfectly. So this is very true. You have picked up the content finally. And uh, you are just uh, giving the right pronunciation to that as well. But you're not able to maintain your fluency that you are hesitant, that you are fluctuating, that you are repeating, correcting yourself. So that means it's equal to the low score, regardless how well you have presented the key contents of the image. So importantly, this is quite important that you maintain your oral fluency with this particular question. And the first type of the diagram and quite common is bar graph. So there are two types of the bar graphs you can have in this particular question, which will be vertical and the horizontal bar graphs. And uh, we will be providing you the different templates to uh, talk about these images. Why templates? Because templates are quite handy and helpful when it comes to the uh, describe image question. Because if you know already what sentences you have to speak, then you don't have to think much okay next what i'm picking up and what i'll be saying now right so it is already understood that yes uh, i'll be speaking these things right i will be speaking these sentences and the blanks in the templates they are why there because whatever data is given in the diagram to you that di uh, data you will be picking up to fix into these sentences and completing them so having the beginning is easy 
with the template like i know if i've said the like this horizontal bar graph a uh, bar graph uh, depicts the information regarding uh opening of the school hours and then next time i'm i was not like thinking okay what to say next i know that that i have to say the data is presented in percentages right so this is quite helpful the templates are quite helpful when you know which sentence to frame next otherwise thinking takes time which actually affecting your fluency because you will be having that thinking sound or maybe a pause or maybe you start some other way and then you realize no 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 this is not right start i should be starting like that and you are correcting yourself you are repeating yourself so ultimately again that is not going to give you good marks so that's why always you should be having must be having templates for the describe image every type of the image you must be having a template so that you don't have to think which sentence to say now you already know your task is to pick data <coughs> i'm very really sorry about that so uh, next thing you see you can take a screenshot of this one this is the template number 1 for the bar graph and uh, at the end of all the images i'll be sharing two templates called as statistical and non statistical which are common uh, for every type of the image which got the number percentages figures in that statistical and uh, the images which are not having any number just the random pictures tables with only the text in them pyramids with the text in them process diagrams right for that uh, for those you will be using that non statistical one but yes i'll be presenting options for the templates as well so that it's your choice whichever you feel more comfortable to speak in that should that you should be learning and using and don't worry about uh, uh that if i'm uh, using this i'll be getting less mark or using that getting is it's like i'm getting more marks no it's not like that it's just that how well you are speaking uh whatever template you are picking that will be judged right doesn't matter if my template is different than yours it doesn't matter but how i am speaking how fluent i am how um uh, good in pronunciation i am so that how my answer will be judged so this is sort of example of the bar graph then comes the line graph now the line graphs you can see it got multiple lines in that there are three lines talking about british science and natural history museum the line graphs can be of uh, different categories when it comes to number of lines in the graph with one single line with two parallel lines with three lines like this we call it multiple line graph or it may be possible there are four things they are differentiating between then again it's a multiple one so after two it's going to be a multiple line graph so when we have a line graph this is the template beside the image that you can use this line graph highlights the number of visitors per month in summer 2019 that's it you don't even have to say over a period of if you feel it confuse you simply say the line graph highlights the number of visitor per month in summer 2013 this will cover your title and this will give an introduction to your uh, question or i'm sorry your answer now the highest number was so wherever the you can see the highest number in the uh, image in front of you so where are you seeing that for the british museum the highest number was or oh, the number was highest in british museum uh, from your june till september that's it right and uh, on the other hand side the number was lowest in science museum uh from the same period of time right okay now two lines are described and uh, additionally or maybe on, you can see that the natural history museum the number of tourist it keep on fluctuating between 600 to 300 right you see it is somewhere around 600 to 300 where you can see that blue line right so maybe uh, this is my way to speak that one overall what is the conclusion here overall the british museum 
maintained the hold of the most tourist visited in summer 2013 or maybe overall this line graph is quite interesting and informative for me so you see this is how we are just saying that pick up the simplest way possible you, you are talking about the image even you can talk about the colors in the image as well you know whatever shapes you can see in that the text written in the image as well it's just that how you are well covering your time well with maintaining your oral fluency and pronunciation correct right so this is one example how you can finish with that and when it is the line graph and the, normally the lines they fluctuate a lot they go up they come down the b stagnant so for all these things if you are explaining such trends you need some good vocabulary phrases and these phrases are quite helpful when it comes to the description of the line graph so you can keep a note of these one the figures fluctuated to till here so these are uh, around six phrases explaining any sort of trend you will be looking at into the line graphs so if you are framing the sentences they become quite helpful in formation of the sentences when the data is fluctuating when the data is uh, rising up sharply or touching a peak of something declining and touching a low of something and it is gradually increasing gradually decreasing right and eventually uh, went up or down or uh, there are several up and down that mean the fluctuations right and after that it touched the peak or low of something so for every sort of line graph trend these phrases will give you uh, a sentence to frame in that will be like very easy and you won't be fumbling if you know the phrases already now now this is the line graph uh, template and uh, this is the pyramid third type of the diagram we are having are the pyramids so pyramids when you look at them they can be as simple as you looking at at it right now and it can be a 3d image of the pyramid as well it could it could be a pyramid with the slabs in that running from bottom to top so these are the three types of the pyramid you may see into your exam so even though it has least uh, uh, data available in it still our task is to complete this description in 35 seconds so how we can do that so obviously we will be having a template for uh, this pyramid as well and i'll be giving you uh, definitely the, uh, uh, the that non statistical template which got introductory sentences around 3 and 4 which will cover lot of your time when it comes to such images where there are less data but yes again there is like obviously we covering what is written there what shapes we can see what it is trying to convey this image what colors you can see right so all these things will be extending your data including the three sentences i'll be giving in the template and including the conclusive sentences so somehow you will be able to reach for the 35 second target as you know 40 second is given to us and out of 40 second how much time we have to speak that is 35 second pyramid based task you only have to read out text that you see in the pyramid the heading title can mostly be found in the middle of the pyramid so if it's pyramid like this you are looking at so it will be like the headings is in the center in the center area so that mean that is your introductory title and uh, it's a multi level image usually multi level like bottom then there is a level up level up and then at the top so around there are four levels they have uh, been, um, drawn there right and with each level there will be number of items under each level there will be some number of item maybe it's a type of um, countries participating in uh, in 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 um, uno uh, initiatives towards better world right so that will be consisting multi level image will be consisting the topmost countries contributing at a larger scale then next level how much they are then next level and top the least uh, participating so this is how like the multi level images can be i hope this make it little bit clear so as we go from bottom to top the number of items progressively decreases why decreases because you can see the shape of the pyramid is like lot space in the bottom area 
keep on decreasing till it reaches to the top. So if, if I just having here the multiple level image, so obviously this will be covering the more numbers than less, than less, than less, than least, right? For describing pyramids, you have to start from the bottom level and walk your way to the top. So we have the sample describe image template, the given pyramid outlines, right? So whatever it's outlining, say that at the lowest level, lowest level that means at the bottom. The dash are the major factors that blah, 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 whatever the names there, figures there, whatever there. Thereafter, that means second level, at the third level, third position, next level, that means the fourth one, and finally at the top of the pyramid. So we are making your way up to the top. You will be easily depicting that without any fumbles, right? Because you have 25 seconds to look at, study at, and fix those things into the given template. So this is the pyramid one. The next type of the image you can have are the pie charts. So guys, the pie charts, they are considered the easiest one. And why? There is a reason behind them. Because when you got the pie charts, pie charts are generally uh, divided into different shares of the pie and every share is given a particular percentage, number or figure with it. Just like as you can see in this example on the screen, like uh, that uh, area is in the dark color, it is 47, then 27. So every, you see every share of the pie, it is quoted with a figure with that in percentage, right? So that makes it a bit easy because we know what is high and there is a straight way number or a percentage. So we know that, okay, this is 20, this is 27, 4, 2 and 47. And we clearly can understand what is highest, what is lowest, what is um, second highest or the least one, right? So that makes the pyramid uh, chart description easy. So just like that, we can have this uh, describe image template for the pie chart, which will help you to depict the data very easily. It says the slices of the pie chart illustrate, and if we quote this one with the data given here, illustrate post scanry degrees awarded in 1997 and 1998, right? And then the data is presented in form of percentages. You see the percentages are given. Now it is crystal clear from the pie chart that the loin share of post scandry degree is covered by first professionals, right? Or maybe you see the bachelors, right? The bachelor is the color. Even though you have said now the first professional and then you realize no, these colors, according to that, this is first professional, which is 4%, but I said bachelor um, for 4% and first professional, I said 47. It's okay. There is no need to correct yourself. What is said is said now, rather than uh, correcting, repeating yourself, it will be like you will be definitely losing mark. But if you're continuing, you won't be losing mark, right? So uh, we'll be running is cover, loin share is covered by bachelors, which is 47%, followed by associates degree uh, with awarded, which is 27%, right? And then moreover, moreover, what we can see there, master post-scanary degree uh, for the year are 20%, which are little bit more than the associate or little bit less than the associate. However, the smallest part is covered by the doctorate post-scanary degree, which is only 2%, having for first professionals slightly above the mark, which is 4%. In conclusion, overall, it can be said that the majority of the post can be degree awarded in these years are the bachelors. That's it. So you see, this makes work easy. When it is a pie chart, 
normally every share of a pie having a figure with it which makes things easy for us to describe we don't have to judge the figures it's already given there because in the, even in the line graph if you want to say figure you have to analyze and judge where the line is uh, falling on which point it is falling on and according to that we can mention a figure like obviously right but here in the pie chart this is not the case so you see this is quite easy you can take a screenshot of this one and you can use this template for the pie charts. The tables. Now the tables are of two categories. So tables are with the figures as well as you can right now look at the screen. And the tables, they can be without the figures, just uh, data written in them. I will... I would like to pick an example for you. Okay, just give me a moment, please. Just a sec, working on it. The tables, tables. Because with figure, it's quite common to get it, but without figure. Sometimes uh, when students get them, they don't feel like, okay, how I can answer this? This is something different than I usually do for the tables. So I'll just show you one example of that. It, it is taking time, but yeah, I'm looking into it. Bear with me, please. Just a sec, I think I won't be getting it instantly now. No, 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 I'm not getting it. It's okay. Okay. Some other day, maybe I'll be able to show you or maybe toward the end of the class when we'll be practicing. So you see, like, suppose it is written with the figures in here, right? And same like that, suppose I have a table and it is only having three uh, columns in that, right? And uh, around four rows, right? So what it will be saying, uh, timetable, uh, for grade sixth, right? And here they have mentioned uh, the days, Monday, Tuesday, Friday, Wednesday, right? And uh, here, suppose there is the time mentioned, like suppose early in the morning, like around 8 to 8.30, then uh, 9 to 9.30 maybe, and 9.30 to 10 or 10 to 10.30, right? And here they are mentioning timetable according to the subjects. Like Monday on this time, what subject they'll be teaching, what, 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 and just like that, they have filled it. So you see in that case, we don't have any numbers in that here. We'll be having just the subject names like English, mathematics, right, literature and science, then history, right? So maybe this, these are the only things mentioned in that. No figures, right? This is what I mean. So even uh, you have a table with figures and without figures. 
stats and non-stat templates they are quite helpful because non-stat one can gel up with the without figure tables and the stats one you can pick data uh, into the uh, thing uh, lines mentioned sentences mentioned in that so usually when we speak table this is the title to be said always cover the title right and then what differentiation on what basis the differentiation is mentioned this is the things by the use of uh, these particular activities and it is ranges from the age 13 to age 60 plus this cover the whole one because we won't be having that much time so this is like how we can cover this in one phrase after that into the figures always you have to look what is the highest so you see clearly it is 58 the highest right and then maybe we are looking for the second highest so in the 40s also there is a 42 which is the second highest you know except that all other figures they are in three two or ones or some even in the eight as well so it's like 58 and 42 is the highest this is for two activities and into the same age group then after that the least one of course comes down to the eight in socializing for 50 to 59 right so this is the three figures we'll be picking out out of the mentioned maybe many right after that we just concluding it up overall this table is quite knowledgeable and informative for me or table this table is providing uh, informative data in it whatever you pick up one sentence as a conclusive sentence just stick to that learn it and use it you can use it to, it with with every uh, type of the describe image uh, it there won't be any issue with that besides that this is the few phrases you can use with the way I just mentioned how you can describe the question. And uh, this table depicts crystal clear from the table. On the other hand, evident that overall it can be inferred from the table. So all these phrases, they will be helping you when, when, when you will be framing the sentences for a table description. So you can take a note of these phrases because obviously you need more sentences to complete 35 seconds. So you can keep these in mind as well. And besides that, you adding data like higher, second, highest, lowest. So it is covering everything for you. Now, the next type of the images you will be having in this question are the process diagrams. So the process diagram, uh, they are of two categories, the man-made processes and the natural processes. So if it's a man-made process, normally the data is like more. And if it's a natural process, usually the data is less, right? Because the natural process will be like a tree is growing from a seed. So there will be three images. A first image will be having a seed sowed in soil. The second will be having a little plant grown out of that. And the third will be a big tree. So you see, this is the only thing you will be looking at for the process diagram if it's a natural one and uh, here we are looking at a process which which is a human uh, made process like how we make paper from the thinnings of a radiator pine tree right so that is a, obviously a man-made process like how we make the natural pro uh, we pick up the natural ingredients and then we uh, make a commercial product so if we have such product usually the data is more so you see here, here you see there is a pine thinning, then there is a debarking drum, right? And then the chipper is there in the next step, then thermo mechanical refiner is there uh, in the next one. And then water is being added. And then finally paper making machine is making the paper. And uh, this we call the whole process plantation to paper. That means this is plantation. And the final product is paper, so plantation to paper. So this is a man-made process. And when we are speaking of the process diagram, first in the 25 second, we have to identify where this is starting, where this is ending. Sometimes we get it in the wrong direction because suppose there are no arrows, just the simple lines or just as only a circle. So in that case, we have to understand where it is beginning maybe or where it is ending. So just in case you have picked second step as the first one, and then now you are continuing, and the first step you are saying as the final step, right? Obviously, by that time, you will be realizing this thing that I have made a mistake, 
right? I have picked the data in a wrong direction, or maybe I have just uh, taken second step as the first one. Now the first I'm saying as a conclusive step, which is not gelling up together uh, with my description well, but still it is all fine till this time you are not fumbling, right? Content wise, you covering everything, it will give you marks anyhow, but fluency, if you affecting that, pronunciation, if you affecting that, your marks will be reducing. So maintain your fluency, even though you started from the last and now saying the first one at the as you believe it to be the last, it's still fine. Never go back, correct, fumble, confuse, pause, or have umming and ahhing. Just continue, right? Any mistake you have made, just continue. But yeah, it's okay. We have 25 seconds. When we are looking at that image in those 25 seconds, we easily realize that, okay, this is starting from here and ending here. Obviously, when we are practicing well enough, so we understand that clearly but just in case we are into the uh, test atmosphere and we are so nervous sometimes we are so uh, confused at times so it's okay if we are pick, picked up as uh, uh, this to be the first step and then i'm just completing it in this direction suppose there is an arrow as well here so ultimately this is going to be uh, the wrong uh, in the uh, way of the process i need to pick up but if i'm just continuing with full confidence not fumbling not hesitating so my I'm, I'm covering the content given on the screen till that moment it's fine right it's not that till that moment even though you are talking about i can see the blue color arrows pointing in the same direction and the machine's color are gray and there are red lines in um, into the machine and also there are blue lines i can see in them and the shapes are quite different for the machine they are a little bit rectangular with cylindrical shape and then there is a lengthify image and there is an image just like a gun like structure so you see this is also you can say right that the main target is to be fluent right and uh, maintain pronunciation fluency and talking about the content on the screen that's the task here right so this is the template for the describe image the process diagram show the cycle of and of o and why sometimes wobble words are there in various different and word one uh, obviously there is a slash so pick one word step stages process are again three words pick one initially in the first step stage pick one furthermore it's transformed developed converted pick one into and after some time in the next stage pick one again it is further converted developed transferred again choose one into and finally the whole process diagram is knowledgeable and informative for me. That's it. Okay. The next type of the diagrams you might be having in your exam, they are the maps. So maps provide you with the uh, here is uh, one which seems complicated, right? It is quite commonly maybe you seen if you are practicing PT. But yeah, if you are doing the PT for first time or maybe the first time you haven't got the good marks and this is the second time you're pairing for that. So it's like when you see this at see at this image, you will be feeling like, okay, how I'm going to describe it in my words. It is having complicated figures, so many colors coded uh, description and only two things they are differentiating between and food security and climate change, the topic they have given. So this is like a quite confusive graph right confusive type of Im image when it comes to the map normally this is not the how maps images will be but yes this is one of the question from pt exam only so the yes you can expect such question as well if you are sitting for the exam so uh, the thing is like when we are talking of maps so this we consider as a non statistical image mostly right we will be starting with the three introductory sentences and then if there are figures, just like here, there are figures, we will be saying the highest, the lowest, right? Or the, maybe the second highest and what other, what other trends we can see. And even if we don't want to pick in that manner, so what this is saying, this is saying uh, the climate uh, unsuit, unsuitable uh, is like, uh, which is color coded uh, in the white or which is maybe shown in the white color and holds a figure of zero that mean and the climate with the malaria unstable in that or absent 
it is in the light blue and dark blue and it is greater than uh, or lesser than the zero or zero to zero point twenty five. And if it fe you feel like now this is very complicated, I'm not gonna say in this manner. So don't pick that in that manner. Just simply say the title: Food Security and Climate Change. And the climates are based on the uh, which are su unsuitable for malaria or unstable for malaria, and where the climates where there are uh, no malaria at all. And the climate suitable for malaria is already also mentioned, which is like in the color red and uh, considered as a dangerous zone for the malaria um for the people living in there because of malaria right from the top and bottom you can see the white color the left and right what you can see in the middle what you can see so the tables usually or uh, the maps usually go with what you can see at the top of the map what you can see at the bottom of the map right and the middle of the map dividing into three parts it become very easy to describe the data and if you still feel my sentence uh, are not enough to complete 35 second then go with what is on the left hand side and what is on the right hand side even if you missing figures in here you're not going after 0 0.5 0 0.75 which is very complicated to speak when it comes to so just ignore that you have to cover the text written and obviously color codes you know that what they are saying so according to that just pick the data and speak it so uh, there are many uh, country names which usually can be seen in the maps so just familiarize yourself with those country names especially with the pronunciation of those country names some country names we haven't heard yet like because uh, Sometime it can happen. Maybe you are hearing more countries, but still there are few country names. Like if you don't, if you know the name, but you you not you do not know the right pronunciation of that. So kindly go after when you practicing different map and coming across the new name country or the country name which are quite difficult to speak or pronounce of. So just look for the right pronunciation and remember that pronunciation, right? Because that will be the way of losing mark in pronunciation. And uh, this is the template behind. And the uh, maps, like the given map, show dash among different countries. To begin with, country in the west and east. On other hand, developing developed countries such as adjacent countries. Finally, at the center of the map. So basically, what you can pick from here that you can pick that I will be speaking with the direction name, like west, east. As you can also talk in the sense of developed countries. And developing countries, if you know, adjacent countries. Like when I'm saying developed country, adjacent to that there is a country which is developing. So these phrases, these words will help you to describe the data in the maps. So finally, at the center of the map, what you can see, and overall it can be seen that majority of areas in the uh, map given is affected by malaria. Just like you see, there is a, a red portion which is quite high, green and yellow, green, yellow, red, orange, which are the colors given to the areas where there is a, a stable malaria population and climate is suitable. So that means overall we can also say that. And overall, I can simply they say that overall it can be uh, seen that the image is quite informative and knowledgeable. Now this is the type of the diagram. Uh, which we can also have in our PTA exam and the describe image question. This we call Venn diagram. Now Venn diagrams are two overlapping circle. Just like in this diagram, there are two circles. They are overlapping each other and sharing a making a common space area where they have written cat and rabbit. So cat and rabbit area, this we call the shared space for the two circles. Whatever data they are mentioning in the separate uh, in the in separately in these two circle, when it comes down to this area, any figures there, names there, process anything mentioned in here, that means it is a common characteristics of both the information they have mentioned separately in these two circle. So understanding this example, like if I say the indoor pet and outdoor pet, that's the description of the different circle that hamster fish parrot they are indoor pets and goat horse and tortoise they are outdoor pets but then there is a common space where they have written cat and rabbit 
so that means these two type of pets they can be indoor pets as well and they can be outdoor pets as well so that what i mean so when we have the overlapping circle sharing a common area so whatever written in that that mean it is a common characteristic of whatever data information subjects they have mentioned separately in the two circles so that we call venn diagram so if we have the venn diagram we got this template here the given venn diagram depicts information about pets it's clear from the diagram that the indoor and outdoor pets are different but there are few pets which can be kept as both right and if we talk about the indoor pets these are considered as the indoor pets and opposite to that on the flip side of that on the contrary of that the outdoor pets are named as this this and this however they also share certain characteristics when it comes to cat and rabbit which can act both as a indoor and outdoor pets right so this is how we can use the words phrases sentences from the template here and overall it can be seen that it's an interesting diagram regarding pet keeping or pets that's it this is like how we are finishing off with the venn diagram now the last category uh, the ninth type of image will be random picture now when i say random picture so obviously it can be any picture you are looking at when we say random right this what actually this question is if you got a image which is having no data it is not a pie chart it is not a table it's not a process it's not a uh it's not a line graph it's not a venn diagram and it's just a picture so that is a random picture they are giving you in the exam so as you can look at this image it is a one random picture a person clicking eiffel tower right now if this question is in the exam so again we have to describe what we can see in the image for this one especially the non statistical template i'm sharing that is the one you have to use and uh, uh, remember and beside that you actually have to look into the image and see what sentences you can frame so to make it quite simple just pick up the colors right pick up the shapes right and anything you feel like okay you if you feel like those are the buildings those far away are the homes those are the towers maybe uh those are the cable wires maybe whatever you can you you can imagine looking at the image like this maybe look looks like that you keep saying that and when it is about to 35 second conclude it up like this is a uh, knowledgeable and informative image in front of me right that's it this is how you can finish off with the random picture there is no need of confusion hesitation and feeling nervous when we have the random picture because random picture actually the one where we can speak more than even if you feel like i cannot cover 35 but i will say you can even speak more than 2 minute as well even if in this image you start talking about the sky looking at so you see there are three colors in the sky at this time right and there are the different shapes and uh, some uh, as the clouds they i i just took them as like it is a shape of a beak of a of a sparrow or a kingfisher bird right now this is my imagination of looking at this image it could be something else from your imagination right and then this eiffel eiffel tower it's a sky touching monument and it is uh, obviously you can also say that it is world renowned uh, place to visit and uh, what shapes you can see it is a structure made of iron if you don't know it's eiffel tower just simply say i am looking at a tall structure touching the sky and it's looking like it is made of iron uh, using the support at the bottom and then decreasing in size while reaching to the top it is having a uh, if it, if it's it's having a flag looking like structure right and uh, this is a, a quite interesting uh, shape given to this structure and such a tall structure is only can made with concrete base 
and the floor uh, uh, under the structure it is white and black in color with lot of squares in that small big broad lines and yes people are also uh, roaming around there are three people i can see roaming around in this sunny uh, sunset view time and there is a one person which is quite clear in the picture and standing in the front of the picture is taking a photograph of this monument right you see when you try explaining this one each and everything in it it will be like lot of things you can say in that so never feel like if it's a random picture now it's going to be a problem for you because it won't definitely not so these are the images you will be having random picture venn diagram map process diagram tables pie charts pyramid line graph and bar graph and these are the images i have told you here right so we just had a look on every type of the image which can be there in our exam now these are some tip and tricks for the describe image to keep in mind avoid umming and ahhing while speaking so if you having um uh, a such sound like that which we call thinking sound as well so you will be ruining your fluency score and ultimately not able to achieve good score in the describe image question now this will reduce your oral fluency and overall marks as well so remember to avoid the grammatical mistake while forming the sentence so when you are framing the sentences uh, if you making the grammatical errors with the sentences this is not right this will be definitely affecting your score in your grammar in your written uh, sorry in your fluency and uh, what is the best way pick up the simple sentence don't try to say every sentence complex or compound even if you saying single and 10 single sentences 12 single sentences obviously the structure need to be correct you you will be your marks will be equal to saying three complex sentences so there is no judgment of how random sentence structure you are using while framing the description of these images it just that how well framed your sentences are even though you saying this is quite interesting image it is having lot of uh, colors in it it is having lot of shapes in it there are few number of people i can see in this image there is one large image of a person standing in the front of the image and that is totally black because it's a sunset view so you see these are very simple sentences and if i'm framing them it is not that i'm receiving less mark as compared to if i'll be making it more complicated or complex no so uh, you can simply uh, avoid any grammatical errors by keeping it to the simple structure now the structures or the templates i'm providing you they are for your help they tell you what sentence you can begin saying and according to that you can pick up the data from the image so it's like a blueprint is already there you just have to pick the number figure or the names written in that and you have to fix in these templates and everything will be easy and normally uh, when we are targeting for eight uh, above or eight in the pte so we recommend that whenever in the speaking they give you 40 second to respond you must be speaking 35 second your answer should not be lesser than 35 second and also it must not be 40 second as well because if you try to speak for the full 40 second maybe it could be the case just only one word uh, you are speaking after uh, the 40 second it's already 40.5 right and that sentence or that word it is ruining your fluency which what which you maintain throughout your answer now it is ruined just because of that one word or maybe a phrase as well or maybe a sentence you are speaking so you know that um, when you saying something and if you are randomly stopping because you are looking at the blue bar and you now know that this is about to finish and your sentence is not yet complete but you are stop speaking so what will happen this will be taken as a pause because your sentence is not complete yet and you know the algorithm of the computer can easily judge that so better always practice speaking 36 seconds so there this is the target this is the target time for you that i am speaking 35 second but i am finishing my answer anyhow for every type of the image by the 36 second 
so if you are practicing with every type of image 36 second whether it is having too much information or too less information so definitely there will be a mindset developed like i have to speak this much only and then it won't be problem that you're speaking more or less you will be in the required time zone and why we say like speak 35 six second why not 30 why not 28 why not 25 because the more you will be speaking here, the more vocabulary you will be showcasing, the more uh, good grammatical structure you will be presenting, the more fluency marks you will be adding, the more pronunciation marks you will be adding. Because as we targeting eight, 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 more than eight or eight say, so it is like this is how we can build up our score. So that's why we say that. And if you targeting for seven or maybe six point five. So maybe you are finishing answer in 30 seconds, 31 seconds, still it will be fine for you. And uh, why we have a structure here that uh, intro and highlight point and then conclusion, because when we are saying the conclusion, it is giving sense of completion to the answer. Why we say overall word with every answer, because it will be telling this is the last sentence. Overall, it is concluded that or overall, this is a quite informative and knowledgeable image for me. So this will be a conclusive sentence that this student has started with the introductory sentence, covered the key content and then finish off the answer with the conclusion. And if such an answer you are presenting with every question, definitely 100 on 100 marks will be given to you. So that's why never, never miss the conclusion. You are saying something and you feel like I still have to uh, say many things. Don't worry about those many things. Now you know it's already 34 seconds. Quickly say the last conclusive sentence and you will be finishing it off in another two seconds and that will be taken as the 100% answer, right? So never do that. I'm speaking this, this and I will be finishing it off first that I'm starting some other sentence other and when it is time to say conclusion, time is already up, right? So this is like you will be getting less mark comparative to you left few content, but you had said your conclusion within time, you will be receiving 100 on 100. So that's how you will be continuing with this answer. So let's see what you have, like, like normal trend, just in case you forgot the template or something. So always say title, right? Look for the highest values, look for the lowest value and what else you can see, maybe two or three more things or maybe two more things and then say conclusion. So if any way you're not uh, you know, able to remember uh, the template or there is a confusion that I, there you just got nervous or something. So this is the trend you have to follow. This is the line you have to follow and timing of course. And uh, try to speak clearly without getting confused between the task. So how we can avoid the con uh, confusions when we have a template, when we know in 25 seconds, this is the data I'm saying, then this, then this, then I'm just finishing off. So then there won't be any confusion. But if you don't have any template and you have no strategy to say the answer and you are looking at the image and then you see, okay, this is a recording time and you start giving your answer. And obviously what happened after saying three sentences, you will be looking at the image again, stopping, pausing, confusing, okay, what to say next. Right. So that's why it's always helpful to go after the template because learning them, you know, practicing them is never a wastage of time. It will be 100 percent paying off thing. And uh, remember one thing, fluency, speaking with fluency. So speaking with fluency and right pronunciation is the most important thing here. Content, you have missed something. Or maybe four things you have mixed only missed only three you have said but you maintain fluency the pronunciation you said right there it was a title sentence there was a conclusion sentence and content wise you just pick out of six three things only your answer will be given marks as 10 on 10 for that right but just in case on the other hand side you have given title sentence you are saying the content now but you are fumbling in between you're confusing you're taking little pauses and you're not giving a conclusion and it's already 40 seconds so your marks will be 5 on 10 right so this is the difference so always remember that with the describe image and that's how you can capture more and more marks from the describe image question now I'll be just sharing the templates I'm saying to you, the one with the 
statistical and non statistical data description in them so here i think they are i'll just try to fix them in the template today just a sec okay now this one and this one Just a second, design, no. Picture, and uh, here it is in the screenshots. I just have taken that image now. Yeah, your. Yeah. I think I have to crop it down. So let's crop it first. Bear with me, because that will be the easiest way to show you every time we're doing the images. Otherwise, it's like keep finding them and all. All right. This is easy now. Yes. Good. Perfect. Let me do the other one as well. is saving let's do the other one easy good This is describe statistical one statistical template. And uh, this one is going to be non statistical. Just a second. So, this I worked upon and prepared, and I hope you will be finding them really helpful. This is non. Statistical template. Okay. So, guys, this is the statistical one which will be uniform for every type of the diagram where you will be having figures like numbers, percentages, data mentioned. Right, so take a picture of that and uh, let's see how it will be helpful. Suppose we got a 
line graph so we'll be giving the given line graph gives information about people attending seminar in the year 2010 the data is calculated in percentages after having a look i can see the various trends are emerging it is clear that the maximum figure is of uh, men which is 25 percent the second highest figure is of we females which is 18 percent or don't give a figure don't worry on the other hand the minimum figure is of uh, old age people i can see some more information regarding uh, the age people 15 to 20 the age people 20 to 26 overall it is concluded that the line graph is very informative and knowledgeable for me so you will you will see when you have a this sort of a template with you which is quite simple covering key contents, having a conclusive sentence, having an introductory sentence. So what else we need? We just have to learn it and remember it. And with every figure, with table, pie chart, line graph, bar graph, and sometimes the pyramids, yeah? When we have uh, figures in them, maps, when we have figures in them, so we're just going after this template, right? So it's like our choice, like suppose a map is having names as well and numbers as well. Now it's our understanding how we are mixing up the template, the next template I'm showing you and this one and making one perfect reply. Or maybe if I'm just picking one only, how I can complete my answer in 35 seconds. So there is no parameter to, you know, simply judge that I'm using this only, only I'm getting marks. How cleverly you can merge them, say them separately, but maintaining your fluency and covering within time, that's what is needed here. Just like that, this is a non-statistical template where uh, we have uh, diagrams, right? Any random diagram or uh, any random picture we have. And uh, when diagrams, when diagrams usually uh, have less uh, data in them, like in numbers, but sometimes it is not having numbers, it's just the words they are having. Just like the example we did today, it is having the pets, outdoor, indoor pets names only. There are no numbers and figures in that. So in that case, it also become a non-statistical image. And uh, the life cycles and the process diagram. So life cycle, when we, it is a natural process, then we say it's a life cycle. Life cycle is like they'll be giving life cycle of a butterfly, of a silkworm, of a... Of a, of a frog maybe so those are considered a life cycle diagram and the processes are when uh, the just like as example the paper making process process the coffee making process uh, from the beads of the coffee beans of the coffee how the powdered coffee commercial powdered coffee is made so that one any sort of the recycling processes you see uh, the used can and the things, how they are recycled and uh, used again. So this is again a process diagram, which is man-made. So pyramids. Pyramids sometimes, uh, usually they don't have figures in them. They are only having the words written in them. So that's why we consider them non-stat. But sometime it will be presenting something with the percentages as well, with or the numbers as well, which is rare case. But yes, if that's there, then the statistical one, otherwise the non-statistical one. And uh, going after the tables, tables are of two category, with number, without number. So according to if it's with number, use the previous one. If it's without number, let's use this one, right? So now this is like the division of all sort of the diagram. So when I say the three introductory sentences earlier, this is what I mean. This is an interesting image in front of me. Let me have a closer look at the given random picture. After having a look, I can see it gives information about an uh, image of the person standing in front of a large monument, right? So this will be like covering around your 10 seconds, eight to 10 seconds. Obviously you won't be speaking the way I am telling, I'm saying every word, by chewing that so that you understand well. But obviously your rate of speech should be neutral, not too fast, not too slow. And after speaking these three sentences, if it's a map, diagram sort of thing, so we'll be splitting that up into three parts. Even if even the random pictures also, you can split them into the three parts, like left-hand side, what you can see, right-hand side, what you can see, and in the middle, what you can observe, right? So this is like how you are splitting the diagram. And if still 
the time is left then what is at the top what is at the bottom so you will be seeing that covering all the corners knock and corner of the image we are having enough data still left some time talk colors talk shapes right and talk anything you feel like and you imagine looking at that image like this seems like that you can say that right but yeah obviously i know uh, you won't be needing that you'll be covering easily 35 second within uh, this given template only if it's a process so i already have given you a few phrases there are more initial stage following stage next stage furthermore moreover in addition to that so all these like easy to frame a good process uh, depiction and uh, any sort of the diagram again the conclusion you are keeping it uniform which will be uh, working working with the stat and non stat both overall you have to say this word it is written in bold letters and uh, uh, obviously in all capitals this is to be said must to be said overall it is concluded that because this is an indication of a conclusion overall it is concluded that the given image is very informative and knowledgeable for me now sometime what happen you are saying your answer and it's only already around 37 seconds and you are now still left with the conclusion sentence it can be the case as a human being sometime we tend to make lengthy sentences and we are just like oh, just near the end of our time provided so what you can do that you know that if i'm going to speak this sentence maybe i'm not able to complete it within 40 second so then act smart there just say overall it is informative image that's it overall it is a informative image in front of even not in front of me or anything like that just overall the given image is very informative overall the given im image is very knowledgeable so just cut it short cut it short to few words only so if if this way you are covering your time perfectly and it's like before 40 you are finishing answer so again uh, yes then this is how you are completing your answer so this is how we are doing the describe image question and as we covered every aspect each thing very uh, carefully and taking care of every parameter so this is how we will be completing it with flying colors that what i believe after this description after this class and still you have any question queries you can mail us mail me at pte@ritsika.com.au or otherwise you can simply post your message right now here in the chat box okay now let's just move to the other item type for today and this is going to be retail lecture so bear with me let me change the slide for that the next item type we will be having after the describe image it is the retail lecture it is again important question uh because retail lecture is like two skills we working in this particular uh, uh item type the one we are listening so we are having the listening scores added into it and then we are answering by speaking so we are having speaking scores in that so two two skills are getting assessed here you are listening and the speaking one so what is the task here that you will be hearing a lecture right mostly you will be hearing a lecture why i have written watching because sometime the lecture you are hearing you are also looking at the video of that lecture now ultimately if you got a video 
it's a good thing because you will be visualizing the things you are listening to definitely giving you more sense more things to remember from that because we're working on both the audio and visual aids of arts right so if you're getting that very good very nice good for you but it is not a uh, you know must thing that you will be getting a video as well or sometime a image as well right so you are audio definitely will be there a video or a image uh, in relation to the lecture they are optional right so uh, mostly we will be getting two to three retail lecture right and two skills are assessed here and the length of the recording will be hearing it will be up to 1 minute and 30 second as well up to 90 second so it could be 1 minute 40 second 50 second 1 minute 10 second 20 second so up to 1 minute 30 second around is the common uh, uh, time limit and uh, how much time we have to answer is same like that 40 second like the describe image and the uh, how much we will be speaking is again 35 second is the target so by 36 second we must be finishing our answer not exceeding before that after that and uh, here we will be hearing to audio that will be played automatically by the system and sometime as i'm telling you you will be getting a video along with the audio and uh, after that you will be maybe having a uh, image sometime so out of these two things you can have um, uh, one thing but again this is not mandatory maybe you get three lectures and there is only audio you are hearing to maybe you get three lectures two lectures you only hearing audio and the third one is having a image associated with that and uh, maybe two lectures you hearing only audio and the third one is having a video with that so it could be any random combination and it could be all three videos or uh, all three audios only so when the audio is finished you will be having 10 second to prepare that mean whatever notes you have taken down to just look at them to arrange them you got 10 second like how i will be now speaking of those notes in the sentence format right so the recording status box it will be showing a countdown until the microphone opens like 10 seconds so it will be telling you uh, beginning in or begin in 10 9 8 so this is a countdown it will be showing you it will be telling you that after this time you will be have to uh, start speaking because that will be the time when you will be getting recorded and uh, at you know when and when it is around 0 second there will be a short tone as well when you are obviously wearing ear pieces so in those those ear pieces you will be hearing a short tone so instantly after tone immediately after tone you must start speaking and before microphone opens if you speaking something obviously it is not getting recorded so there is no fun of that so just take care of that 10 seconds window so whatever you are speaking you should be speaking clearly of course maintaining your fluency maintaining the sentence structure and uh, pronunciation as well there is no need to rush we have 35 pretty good seconds with that to finish our answer now finish speaking before the progress bar reaches the end and the reason we know why and the word recording changes to completed when the progress bar reaches to the end so that mean when it is 40 second the status will be first recording and at, at 40 second it will be changed to completed that mean now the mic is off you are only able to record your response once there is no uh, second chance even for hearing the audio even for recording your answer so that's the only window you have to give your best shot now while the audio is playing you can take notes so if i refresh this sentence i would say you must take notes right why must take notes because obviously we won't be able to remember each and everything just like that from the lecture and if you have taken few points ultimately that's always helpful for us to have a look on them and including them into your answer rather than if it's like uh, nothing you have taken as notes so it will be become hectic for you to complete 35 36 second so we have a erasable note board with us provided throughout the exam from the beginning till the end we can take as many as note for as many as question we want to so we have a duster as well if we feel like our sheets are full now you can erase and reuse that area there will be two markers provided so one is working fine you feel like it's getting light 
close it up, place it down, pick another one and use that, right? And always close the caps because uh, if you keeping them open only, then they won't be working well. So just in case, obviously it will be like wasting time or you not be able to take notes properly. So better always uh, have their caps on when, they, when you are placing. And suppose you're using the other one for five, 10 minutes, and then you'll be seeing it is now getting lighter. Close it off, place it there, pick the first one. When you're opening it back, it's working fine. So even if you feel like I want to check them at the beginning, you can check like if the ink is dark enough or you want to have a new one from the invigilator. So you can do that as well. And uh, this is the screen for your question. As you can look at now, this is a question where they have provided you with the image. As I told you, this may or may not be the case. So if we have an image, so we can assume like, okay, what sort of lecture we can, uh, we are about to hear. Obviously, this show us something related to the space exploration, the rocket launch, right? And the sky things, you know, such particular things we are about to hear in this lecture that what we can assess from the image. So we can think of the possible vocabulary we are hearing like the rocket launch, sky, right and uh, space exploration such words right and obviously topic is like travel and uh, space exploration this is going to be our topic so we have to make good use of the image by just try to predicting the uh, i mean what could be the topic obviously we don't have enough time so how images are helpful when suppose you have taken notes also and you are now you are preparing your answer also and uh, there is like the notes are not enough maybe and you feel like okay what I can say now so keep looking into the image and just like uh, just like that you don't remember anything or it's like it's not already 35 seconds and you and you know that after this sentence I don't have anything to speak so if image is there talk something from the image anything so this is a help from the image if you have it so you just look at it you see something like, uh, okay, and it reminds you of something from the lecture. Very good. Doesn't remind you from anything lecture, but yes, to, you can talk about, okay, the spaceships, they are usually have a lot of, uh, um, lot of uh, fire coming out when they are launched into the sky and slowly the stars start separating into the different pieces. So you see, this is how you are covering your time as well. Cleverly, if you running out of the words, notes, sentences before the time if image is given and images can be uh, just like as you're looking at and images can be with words in it words in it like maybe suppose this is a spaceship so they are just pointing out the different parts of it right and they just have the you know arrows here and they're saying tip of the rocket launcher cockpit and uh, this is maybe whatever i don't know anything about it so maybe whatever whatever the parts specifically of the spaceship they're just pointing them down if you have an image with the text in it then you feel really lucky about it because that's actually what you will be hearing in the lecture as well so even though you're not able to take good notes or you feeling like i understand this word but it is the this is the word and you can confirm from the image because sometimes images do have few words in them and they are from the lecture only. And definitely if three words are there, you can get take three sentences from the image only. And before after before that, you can paste up your notes as well. So this is the help of the retail lecture with the images. We got two boxes here. One is status box, other is recording box. Status box will be like where we having uh, what is happening now? If it says playing, recording, right? So playing that means you are hearing the audio right now and you are taking notes. And volume bar, you can use it to increase or decrease volume. Recorder box will tell you what is the current status. So current status, that means beginning in 10 seconds. That means this is the time they have given you to prepare your answer. And after that, when it is current status is recording, that means you're getting recorded and this progress bar, it will start moving. And uh, this will be telling you how much time you left with. And when it is touches the end, current status will change to completed and screen will move to next question. So this is how the question will be. And uh, 
when we are hearing the lecture retail lecture we have to listen lecture carefully we have to identify the key points in those lecture and definitely we don't try to write the whole thing whole lecture we won't be able to if you are a, a good note taker maybe you can do that but it's like if you not uh, if don't try to force yourself into that because that's how you will be getting too involved into writing and losing the track of the main ideas discussed in the lecture always take notes in a flow chart way never write randomly here and there flow chart way because then you don't have to decide what to say first and second you already have a flow of the views from the lecture and always use the abbreviation and sign language wherever possible and if you know a word is quite lengthy so cut it short and write in abbreviated way we all know how to abbreviate the words we can also develop few abbreviation for us and we can use them in the exam as well be careful with your tenses so when you are saying your answer your sentence formation should be correct and as i told you generally it is not necessary that you are giving the answer in complex sentence compound sentence even if you speaking every sentence as single sentence and you are having around 10 11 sentences in your answer and all the sentences are single you still be getting good marks comparative to you making complex sentence making lot of grammatical errors you won't be having 10 on 10 you will be having 5 6 around so that's why keep it to simple sentences but be careful that the sentence is correct that should be your target at the last speak for more than 35 why 35 seconds that is the minimum time you must be speaking and finishing at 36 second is the max thing you can do 40 second we have but we should not be uh, getting into the 40 second zone and we really know the reasons why same as we have given in the describe image this is the flow chart way of taking note with the it here they have made the arrows as well but it is not necessary that you are making the arrows right because it will be wasting your time so just like common cause bottom lack university and after that like after and after keep writing the words phrases right don't give the errors it will be wastage of time only and this is the uh, sign language positive like upwards downwards right so anywhere you feel these are applicable use them so basically you doing two tasks simultaneously here you are listening in the retail lecture and taking notes as well so this is go hand in hand thing so if you listening taking notes only then you will be able to use them later obviously after listening there is no fun of taking note it is time to give answers straight away now and uh, this is the template you can use with your retail lecture it got uh, six sentences in it so these all sentences have a sequence so when we have a retail lecture answer or question our answer should be having a sequence in that right a sequence means firstly secondly thirdly and if you go after this one it will be saying in the beginning mentioned further further highlighted also said that so again there is a sequence you can see here that should be there in your answer with the retail lecture so it's like um, sequence of the events happening yeah ma'am <clears throat> I have been using another template. Do you mind if I say another the template that I have been using, and will you be able to tell me if that is right or wrong? You can share that you have in uh, written form. Ah, uh, no, I can actually tell now. Is that okay? Yeah, say that. Um, normally I have been learning that. Uh, I have seen a beautiful picture in front of me. Let me have a closer look at this picture. After taking a closer look, I can see different color in this picture, such as green, black. white i can see different number in this picture that is for describe image uh dear oh yeah no 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 what i'm telling sorry retail lecture yeah 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 it's the similar uh, in the retail lecture uh, same the lecturer talk about that the lecturer went on and mention about that the lecturer also highlighted that in the conclusion yeah it's similar okay sorry i was confused <laughs> yeah no 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 it's okay it's fine a uh, retail lecture that's what i'm telling the points you will be picking up definitely they gonna be from the lecture and how you are putting them you are putting them with different uh, connectors or a sequential uh, words so when i say beginning 
mentioned, further highlighted, also said that. So all in all, this is what you are trying to convey. So it's equal. So whether you're using yeah. that, it's fine. Even I have three more templates for the retail lecture. So some student, mm -hmm. it's like your choice, how yes. you put that, but whatever you should be speaking, it should be fluent. Okay. And, and the and structure should be correct. Yeah. Uh, another question, since uh, it's not the writing today, is it? I was so worried that I missed writing class because I had to attend a meeting at the work. Uh, yeah, but the recordings are available for the classes, any class you missed. Yeah. So you can go to the YouTube and search for Sika Sydney. Uh -huh. And uh, when you open that page, uh, you will be seeing the post, uh, the lectures are posted there. Ah, oh, so when are we having writing class now? Is it on Monday? Yeah, of course, this is Friday and today. So I will be available with the next class on Monday. But yeah, between that Sunday is the class. Yeah. 12 to 2. So if so you, you, will, attend, you will attend, you will teach us? No, that will be with Shipra ma'am. And uh, if you can request her that you want to go with the writing, she will be definitely yeah. dealing with that. Okay, so what is the timing on Sunday? Um, it's 12 to 2. And yes, for the Zoom link, that will be the another Zoom link you will be mm -hmm. using on that day. Yeah. You have to go to the Facebook page, Sika. Yeah. Sika Melbourne, right? Yeah. And uh, there, post there, Sunday PTE class in the search box. Yeah. So post will come up, right? Yeah. And in that post, post the link is mentioned. Oh, okay, I'll do that. So oh. copy that and use that link at 12 o'clock on Sunday. Okay. Oh, so you are from Sydney. <laughs> I no, no, she's Melbourne. from Sydney. I am uh, from uh, Melbourne. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay, okay. Yeah, okay. she will be taking class from Sydney office. So you will be using that link on uh, Sunday. But yeah, all other classes Monday to Friday are with me and the link you know, right? Okay, yeah. So even if, if you're free on Sunday, so that will be like the you know, the time when you can go to class and attend those classes as well. Yes. So if you request to the ma'am, she will be definitely covering the writing. Okay. Thank all you. Right. Yeah, all good. Okay, so the key, key highlights for the retail lectures are try to understand the question types. Now we know the question type and we have a technique to build our answer as well. So in the answer, we will be including, try to include in the key points because that will be increasing our content score. And uh, we have to say everything in the right pronunciation because that will be enhancing our marks in the enabling skills. Oral fluency will remain the key factor in this item type as well. So I am fumbling, I am hesitating. Definitely content is 100% right. Pronunciation is 100% right, but my score won't be favoring me, right? So better. This should be, must be maintained. So normal pace, not too fast, not too slow, and no repetition of the word. Avoid repeating the words in the uh, retail lecture answer. Note down key point while the audio is playing. Definitely, otherwise there is no chance you can take the notes. And uh, prepare the answers by using the technique used in the template because your answer must have a sequence in them. And the template here or the template maybe you are having, just look into that. If it's saying everything sequential, if it yes, the answer is yes, that template, the, the template is correct. And you can use that. And uh, beside this template I just shared with you, I want to share the another three templates I'm having with me. So it's your choice. Whatever you feel easy. You can pick that one and you can learn that one and you can use that one later. So here I am just giving it to you. Just a second. Where I have kept it. This is here. So when is your exam, Shushmita? 22nd of this month. Oh, it's exactly 10 days. Yeah. 11 days. Yeah, it's, it's nearly, it's very so How nice. is your preparation going? So-so, mm, not too much. <laughs> oh, so-so? Yeah. You should be like, you should be saying good one. How much time are you giving to your preparation or it's like? Uh, the day I'm working, I'm trying to work less now. Mm -hmm. so in the work day, not much, but in the day of, yeah, I'm practicing from AP Uni at the moment. Oh, AP Uni. Yeah. 
All right, all right. Okay, yes. I've kept that. Keep hearing, keep hearing. You do a lot of practice from the people, actually. Yeah. All right, maybe I'm not getting it today, but I have shared in some lecture. So, yeah, I don't know where I've kept it. Okay, so this template, and as I told you, any template with the sequence in that is helpful for your answers in this particular question. And uh, till the time you are fluent, not repeating the words, taking the content uh, from the uh, lecture, and uh, everything will be working fine with you. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so now I'll be making you here few, I would say one lecture, we'll be taking notes and then we'll be binding answer to that one. Okay, I'll let me prepare my copy and just study with your parents. Okay. I also take mine. All right. So keep the mic off for time being so that you can hear properly. I am not hearing anything um, because I'm not playing. Oh, okay. I'm playing now. Okay. I'm looking which one to play. Okay, this is I'm playing now. Ready? All right. According to the World Health Organization, 400 million people worldwide have no access to essential health care. That's a staggering number of people. Some of those services include things like basic sanitation and clean water, prenatal care and vaccinations or immunizations for children. Many things contribute to this crisis. Sometimes people live too remotely to get timely care if an emergency occurs. Even when living in a city, the patient to doctor ratio can be as high as 50,000 people to just one doctor making it impossible for the doctor to meet the demands of health care in that area. These are valuable people, made in the image of God who are physically suffering. Many of them without a personal relationship with Christ. So we do this with a week of hands-on training consisting of a variety of topics like basic sanitation and hygiene taking vital signs, wound care and infection prevention, basic birth assisting and emergency skills. Those who participate in the training then have practical skills in supplies to care for others in their community in a way that glorifies God and opens the door for sharing the gospel in a new way. When you're ready, tell me. Yeah. <clears throat> the lecturer talks about work. work uh, uh, just work. a second. Can I record your time? Yeah. Now. 
the lecturer talk about the World Health Organization. The lecturer also mentioned about 4,000 million people. The lecturer also mentioned about the lack of basic, uh, basic water immunization, um, basic hygiene, vital sign won't care. The lecturer also went on and talked about the crisis for the basic need. The lecturer also mentioned about emergency care. The lecturer also went on and talked about 5,000 people to one doctor. The lecturer also mentioned about valuable people are not getting enough health care. The lecturer also went on and talked about the emergency training community. Overall, the lecture was informative. All right, this 38.05. Timing is good. And... Um... Yeah, you can also say the lecturer or maybe you can use the pronoun he as well as or she as well because she is a female uh, giving the information. So, mm -hmm. yeah, that was that are almost the points like uh, firstly, they said, according to the World Health Organization, 400 million has no access to the basic sanitization, clean water, immunization and vaccination for children. And uh, sometimes people live too remotely that they don't have the emergency coverage. And uh, there are just one doctor into the main areas uh, uh, on about 5,000 people, which is not meeting the demand of the people in terms of the healthcare. And people are suffering a lot because of that. And there they are providing the training, which consisting the basic sanitization topics like the wound care, emergency skills. And if anybody attending that, it will, uh, he'll be having the practical skills to cope up with the situation uh, the, the, or the topics uh, mentioned in this uh, training. And uh, this will be opening new doors to glorify and live a healthy life in new ways. So that was the uh, uh, content of the lecture. Okay, let's listen to the other one. This is... A bit, uh, you can say it is going on slowly, steadily. Now let's see how this is going on. So, okay, where is the audio to this one? Yeah. Okay, I'm playing it. This is a bomb calorimeter. This is the actual piece of equipment that research reviews to calculate the energy content of either biodiesel or maybe even the potato chips that you had for lunch today. When they calculate the amount of energy, they're going to calculate it in heat units, which would either be joules or calories. I want you to look inside the bomb calorimeter inside. Here you can see that there's a silver bucket. Water goes all in here and this is actually the bomb is the smaller silver cylinder. What you do is put your fuel sample in the van. These two electrodes are connected to the bomb. These provide the spark that will ignite your sample when your sample burns or combust that gives off energy. So how is the energy collected or how did how does a scientist figure out how much energy is being given off? Well, it's a closed system. There's a lid here that goes on top of this calorimeter and what's in here in the lid is a stir. The stir is going to stir the water that's in this big pool here so that the heat given off from the sample is going to warm the water in a uniform way. This is the temperature probe. This goes down in the water off so and measures the change in temperature because as the sample is burned, it will give off heat and the temperature of the water will increase. So the lid goes on the sample is prepared. The last thing that you need to make a combustion reaction happen is oxygen and at some point during the process some oxygen is added by a tank that's connected to the calorimeter here so we are going to burn a sample of the biodiesel that you've prepared and get some feedback on the energy content of it you'll be able to use this to compare it to petroleum based fuels like octane Um, that lecture was not so clear for me. However, I have note note down a couple of um, mm -hmm. important topics. Okay. Yes, go ahead. Do you want me to go on now? Yeah. I will use the template that you have provided. I think. 
All right. right. In the given lecture, the speaker was discussing about calories. In the beginning, the speaker mentioned about the equipment, calorie energy, going to day, calories, born calories method. In the lecture, the le lecturer also mentioned about the smallest cylinder, um, energy collected, how much energy is given. The lecturer also mentioned about the heat given, uniform temperature. The lecturer also mentioned about heat and temperature will increase, reaction happen in oxygen. The lecturer also talked about the feedback to control, no compare. Overall, the lecture was informative. Okay, study for 11, not bad. Mm -hmm. And um, yeah, this is actually the lecture is about bomb calorie meter. B U M O R N. Bomb. B O M B. Bomb calorie meter. Bomb. Oh, calorie yeah. meter. So the given lecture speaker was discussing about a bomb calorie meter. Mm -hmm. Right. So in the beginning, he said that it used to uh, look into the energy produced by in the terms of heat unit, which will be joules or calories. Right. Mm -hmm. And when you get, I mean, this lecture, it got an image as well. So then mm -hmm. the things will be easy. Yeah, still, yeah. Suppose we don't have an image. So this will be the second sentence. Then she mentioned that, that there is a silver bu bu bucket, sorry, attached to that where the water goes. And there you can put the fuel sample as well. And when it is put with the fuel sample, it provides the sparks and the sample starts burning. And then the consumption, combustion, sorry, happen. And the combustion happens with the help of the oxygen. There is a steering uh, wheel is attached, which stirred the sample. And it will uh, giving more heat to that and definitely increasing the temperature of it. So we will be doing this experiment with the sample of biodiesel, which is used to compare any petrol based fuel. So finally, it can conclude that lecture provided crucial information about bomb calorie meter. I mean, this is the notes I have taken. Yeah, I have not seen the image as well. So for me, this is what the process I just understood. For you, it is it could be something else. But you remember at the last, the sentences must be fine. The grammar of the sentence must be fine. It should not be like that. My sentence is no, making no sense and I'm saying that, right? So whatever yeah. points you have noted down, try to connect them, right? Mm -hmm. That's a good sentence. Maybe simple sentences and finish it off. And obviously, it's not necessary that every one of us are able to uh, write everything. Of course, this is not possible. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, the answer is fine and your timing is good. Yeah, thank Keep you. Within time. Yeah, thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, this is the last. Let's listen it. Okay, playing it. Yeah. Hello again. Well, we're near the end of our unit on newspapers. I'm going to talk about our national newspaper, USA Today. USA Today is now more than 25 years old. When it began, few expected it would last this long. Well, not only has it lasted, it has thrived. USA Today is the largest selling daily newspaper in America. It is also distributed in many countries around the world. But that's only part of the story. The real success of USA Today is the way it changed the newspaper industry. USA Today changed the way papers look. It changed the way reporters write. And it changed the way papers gather and deliver news. USA Today set out to be different. Newspapers at that time were, um, in trouble. Fewer people were reading them. The papers were full of bad news about crime and killing. They had long stories. They didn't have color photos and graphics, and many could not include the latest sports scores. USA Today changed all that. It had shorter stories, most of which did not jump or continue from one page to another. It used color photos and colorful charts and graphics. It did not have much international news, but it did have lots of sports, entertainment and human interest stories. It was trying to appeal to younger readers. 
These readers had been raised watching television, so they had trouble, ah, paying attention to longer stories. They wanted, um, to be entertained, not informed. At first, many people laughed at USA Today. Other newspapers called it McPaper. They were comparing it to McDonald's fast food, which isn't, um, very healthy. It fills you up, but it doesn't have much nutrition. They said McPaper was the same way. It looked good, but the news it had wasn't very important. Mm, yeah, should I start? Yes, that's right. I was finishing my notes. All right. Okay, quickly. Yeah, now. In the given lecture, a speaker was discussing about the U.S. newspaper. In the beginning, a uh, speaker mentioned that um, uh, U.S. newspaper have lasted for 24, 25 years old. It has lasted long and thrived. Lar and it is one of the largest selling in the U.S. and around the world. And the lecture also mentioned about the way that people have changed the look of the right. Um, the lecturer also mentioned about the before. Few people were reading them, and most of them used to um, uh, laugh at the newspaper. Uh, <laughs> I'm, I'm worried. He also mentioned that uh, latest sport news was none of was not mentioned in the before newspaper. The lecturer also talked about the. the you are above time already. Yeah. Yeah. Uh huh. I was just mumbling around. <laughs> Yeah, because uh, you got a lot of points and now you are disturbed what to say. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so that's because what we have to actually to take care of. And we have a lot of points, even though it could, it could be a problem. What we'll be saying here, the lecture is about the USA Today newspaper, which is now 25 years old and nobody expected it to be lasting this long, but it thrived through all these years and distributed in many countries and become a largest selling newspaper. The real success is uh, with, with the way reporters write it in, get the news and it is delivered to the people, which is not the case in the past because there the where fewer people were meeting the needs of the newspaper. There are no photo graphics and the stories are long in the newspaper, but the USA Today changed every Everything and it start covering the special articles on sport, entertainment, human interest stories, and people consider it as a math paper with less information, just like the less nutrition. I mean, I even write the many words uh, content, yeah. but mm. how we are delivering that is more important. Mm. So if we just confuse in our own notes, ultimately we'll be messed up. So what is important in 10 second window that you should make quickly by looking at the notes only quickly make a story out of that your own story how i will be saying that only then you will be able to uh, speak fluently otherwise that definitely it will be like the, the way it happened with you right now right yeah all right that's all for today so sunday you can attend the class with shipra ma'am and i will be seeing each other on monday now so bye bye have a good day ahead lovely weekend thank you very much for your and help practicing for doing these two days you will be needing it more as your exam is really near yeah okay I'll all that. right let's go bye 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 see you yeah see you